Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to plant some flowers in my garden. I've been sowing some flower seeds in my garden that mostly go with the vegetable garden like marigolds, calendula, seniors, sunflowers, cornflowers. They are doing well, they are sprouting and growing but I already want some colors in my garden so I got some flowers from the garden center and also online and today I'm going to plant them and it's going to be a fun day because I've got some hydrangeas, geraniums, dahlias, lupins, azaleas and some petunias. So it's going to be all fun. I thought I'll take you along with me. So let's go outside. At first, I'm going to remove these red lettuce, which has been growing since the start of spring. It has started tasting a little bitter, so it is time to remove them. I'm harvesting a few leaves from the top, which I hope will not taste as bitter as the lower ones. And finally, we'll remove them. Around this lettuce are also some corianders growing. They have also started to bolt. So I'm removing all of them and making some space for the hydrangeas. This container always has some weeds growing on them, probably because I leave the top soil exposed. I'll be mulching the soil after planting the hydrangeas. So let's remove the weeds first. The soil in this pot was already replenished during the start of spring with some bokashi compost. Since I am planting flowering plants, I will be adding some bone meal to the soil which is a slow releasing fertilizer. It helps in the development of more blooms. I also have some crushed eggshells left which I use while planting tomatoes, chilies and other veggies. I will mix it with the soil. I am also adding some freshly harvested compost to the hole and mixing it well. While choosing pots for the flowers, I was confused as to put which one in which pot. Finally, since monochrome is in trend these days, I decided to give this hydrangea paniculata a pot of its own color. As I mentioned before, I am putting a thick layer of mulch on top of the soil to keep the weeds away and most importantly to keep the moisture content in the soil constant since hydrangeas love good moisture in its soil. We are done planting this hydrangea. Let me know how do you like this monochrome look of this hydrangea. Next is again a hydrangea. It is called Risp hydrangea. From my understanding, it is almost similar to the Panicolata. But this one has a double shade. The tag shows it as a mix of red and white. I guess it will turn red during the autumn season. I am using the same planting method for all the flowers that I am planting today. That would be mixing some bone meal, crushed eggshells and compost into the hole before planting the flower. Finally, putting a thick layer of mulch. The next one to go are these azaleas. I always have admired azaleas for their soft pale petals. I brought this one thinking that I would plant them on the ground but I saw how big an azalea can get and it needs lots of space. So I decided to contain them for now in this pot until I get a bigger space. While editing this video, I realized that even this one has a monochrome look to it. I did not realize it while planting. Next are some geraniums which will go in this small terracotta pot. Thank you. 
Next I am planting some white and pink petunias in these pole planters and also in a hanging planter. I often see the variety of petunia called super petunias being used in other gardens, especially in the gardens of bloggers from USA. Those varieties grow vigorously and it is such a beautiful show during the summer. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the same variety in Germany. If any one of you know how to get it here, let me know in the comments below. Let me now show you all the flowering plants that we planted in their final spot. Here is a pink and white petunia in the hanging planter. There is again another yellow flower. I think it is a hybrid petunia but I am not sure of its name. Below that is our hydrangea paniculata. On the corner of the patio, I have placed the risp hydrangea. The variety is called pinky winky. The dahlias and lupins have been planted on the ground in the flower bed. The dahlias are giving more and more blooms but they have been heavily eaten by slugs. So I've kept a slug trap near to the plant. Let's see how that grows. The same story with the lupins, heavily eaten by slugs. I think they are also done with their blooming for this year. The pole planters with the pink and white petunias. Now let's go to the vertical planter. Near the, my vertical planter, I've placed the azelia. Azelia blooms for a very short time. I think they are done with their blooming for this year. Near to that, again, I have some more flowers grown from seeds. These are corn flowers. There is a cosmos almost ready to be planted out. I've also sown some extra cosmos seeds in the same container and senias also sprouting out in the containers. One of you suggested that it is better to grow senias in containers so that when it gets eventually hit down by powdery mildew, we can move it around. That was a very useful tip and I have followed it. In the long planter, there are some pansies and hydrangea macrophilia growing. I love how beautiful these pansies are blooming. I planted them last fall and they've been blooming ever since. Behind the pansies are the black-eyed Susans started from seeds. I've not given them proper trellis yet. It is high time that I provide them one. On the other sides, I've planted some asters, again grown from seeds, some pansies again in the front and clementis growing on the trellis. Finally, here are the geraniums that we planted near to the seating area. The seating area needs to be painted, some cushions are missing, lots to do on the patio. That was basically how I am adding some colors to my garden. I'll show you an updated version of these blooms in the June garden tour or maybe in the July garden tour which is coming in two weeks. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next. Bye and take care.